The latest weakness in the yen is because of growing speculation of more aggressive fiscal and monetary easing by a Japanese policymaker. Early this morning, there was speculation that uh, uh, the Japanese government were, was potentially going to introduce a 4% of GDP fiscal stimulus at the end of the month. Now, that's basically double what was initially leaked. Uh, last week, so that has given the yen a bit of a of a down leg push here, and uh, also uh, supported the, the rally in Asian equity markets. Okay, if we get disappointment, if the BOJ next week elects to sit on its hands, do nothing, say negative rates, we're waiting for it to cycle through the system, all the rest of it, then what happens to dollar yen? Can we revisit 100, possibly even lower once again? Is that a risk? Certainly, expectations now have been ramped up for some kind of aggressive measures, uh, both on the fiscal and monetary front, from Japanese policymakers. So there's clearly some room here for disappointment. And, uh, and, and historically speaking, there's, there's, uh, there is a precedent for Japanese policymakers to disappoint relatively elevated market expectations for easing. So if, if the Bank of Japan does disappoint, so if they don't cut rates as in more negatively, as much as the market expects or, or they increase or, uh, their asset purchases by a relatively subdued amount, then uh, expect the Japanese currency to, to gain further versus the US dollar. And we could potentially test uh, one, uh, 102, 103 if that's the case. Understood, Elias. Uh, ECB, and how do you approach uh, the euro? Because uh, the, the Reuters copy seems to sum up Mario Draghi's predicament quite neatly. They say this, the trick will be to sound dovish enough to signal readiness to act, but without committing. Does that sound right to you? Uh, what should we expect, and how do you approach the single currency? I think, sure, you're bang on right there. I mean, that's, a, that's precisely what we're going to see from the ECB. Uh, obviously, it's widely expected that policy rates and the monetary policy in general by the ECB will remain on hold. Uh, however, we expect the ECB to warn again that the risk to economic activity in the Eurozone remains uh, skewed to the downside. And that will uh, keep uh, Eurozone swap rates under downside pressure and, uh, and weigh on the Euro versus the US dollar specifically. OK, uh, Elias, just a quick one on the yuan, uh, the Chinese currency. Uh, what, what are the signals telling you? Because we've seen uh, almost a stealth depreciation in the yuan. The macro picture isn't shooting the lights out. There's uh, debt in the coal and steel sector. That's due to mature later this year. It's not a pretty picture. Depreciation pressure remains, yes? The depreciation pressure remains, but the key here is that the depreciation pressure will remain orderly. I mean, it's interesting to note that the, the, the renminbi has only fallen by 3% versus the U.S. dollar. And on a trade-weighted basis, it's only down 5%. Uh, what's more interesting is that volatility on the renminbi remains relatively muted, especially relative to uh, currencies in the G10. Uh, so, I mean, the, it, it's, the renminbi issue is certainly on the back burners.